My first look at the Tesla Model Y. Finally, we have one in Germany. These here are the Shanghai built models already facelifted. So interesting also if you're interested in the Tesla Model Y in your market. Let's take a look at the details. Exterior wise, of course, this very streamlined Tesla front. They pay a lot of attention to the wind efficiency. And of course, it looks kind of similar like the Tesla Model 3 because they share three quarter of the whole parts. Of course, this is here the SUV or crossover, so one quarter is still different. At the side profile, 187 inches in length or 4 meters 75. Wheels, 19 or these here 20 inch for the long range model. The performance model can also get 21 inch wheels. Cameras all over the vehicle, as we know from Tesla, for example, also for that sentry function. And here in the side profile, like the Model 3 facelift, here now black door handles and also black frames around the windows to get a sportier look. And this is definitely the difference then to the Model 3. We have this higher SUV, this kind of small Tesla Model X. And this is supposed to be very successful, I think, because it really hits the spot on the market. One of the most surging segments here, these compact electric SUVs. Uh, VW ID4 GTX, we, which we recently had, would also be one of the main competitors here and then also now in Europe. Strong shoulder part right there. And it features a battery of 75 kilowatt hours net. And this is supposed to bring you some 500 kilometers or 300 miles of range. They did some experiments with smaller batteries, but Elon Musk canceled that again in the US because it wasn't obviously, you know, that found of the range. So, so far, this 75 kilowatt hour battery, let's see what else there is to come. Dual motor, one in the front, one in the rear. Very efficient, as we know from the Tesla Model 3. And then there's also the performance version, just with a little bit more punch. Here in the rear, you can see also again the tail lamps from the Tesla Model 3. Overall, a very streamlined look, and I think it looks definitely less bulky than the Tesla Model X in the rear. And of course, the big thing here about the Tesla Model Y, also if you compare it to the Model 3, is this huge hatch then. You can load in things easier. There's no cover then here, but you have very good access immediately. Right there, look at that. Vertical way, no problem at all. Huge box here underneath. For example, for charging cables, or you use the frunk, of course, it's also well, you know, for, for whatever. And I also have my measuring stick right here. This is here not exactly a, you know, a meter or 40 inches, a little bit less. So this should be a little bit wider, I think. But then the overall height here is 27 inches or almost 70 centimeters. And then we have a very good folding function here. We have some buttons here on the left side, here and here and then they automatically fold flat. This is a very good and usable function. And to the seats as we would be driving as tall adults, it's like one meters 90 or 75 inches. That's actually really good. So you can, you know, when you put things to the middle or move the seat a little bit more forward, you can score this magic two meters or 78 inches line. So yeah, I, I would say some furniture transport from Ikea or something <laughs> that does work indeed. So this is probably the reason to go for the Tesla Model Y. And if you now think about the space you have in the X, for example, yeah, you can very well score everything with that. Also ski hatch available. You can only lower the middle part and that's also possible. Tell me a little bit about the building quality, Tom. The build quality? Oh, Thomas B asked me about the build quality. Well, I checked around the vehicle so far and I have to say the build quality actually really stepped up the game. There was, um, there was one part here, for example, at the rear door with the Tesla Model 3 here, this, this edge here, which was very sharp a lot of times, but this has been improved here right now, for example, or also sometimes, you know, some um, gaps or transitions on the inside. But so far what we see here or here, this seems all fine. Also, when we close the doors, yes, this is a very German thing now, here, the gaps right there, the famous German Spaltmaße, but this is here kind of very well aligned. So yeah, I'm really looking forward also. I mean, these are now the Chinese built models. You maybe know that in Grünheide, it's in Brandenburg, not in Berlin, it's close to Berlin. There will be the new Tesla Gigafactory. They will build the Model Y also in Germany. And then we're also really excited to see models built there, probably in 2022. Two more facts before we move to the interior. Towing capacity, 1.6 tons or 3,500 pounds. That's actually quite decent for an electric vehicle at that size. And the acceleration figures, 
5 seconds for the long range model, all wheel drive to 1 km an hour or 4.8 seconds to 60 miles an hour and the performance model 3.7 seconds to 1 km an hour or 3.5 seconds to 60 miles an hour. And you do profit of course from the supercharger network and up to 270 kilowatt of fast charging that also sounds good. We have to see about the charging curve though, so they're not the best in charging curve, but definitely the best in the supercharger network. Door handles well integrated and then door closing sound. Yeah, it's okay, nothing special, but we also have here the, um, you know, the frameless windows. By the way, here dual insulation glass, that's also good then. So yeah, we see then when we drive the vehicle how silent it is at a later stage. Soft touch top part, microfiber insert, also soft touch here for your elbows, then a nice wooden insert in the black interior. This is the door opener, but also here the failsafe, the manual opener is always right here. Reasonable door pockets and then also black Model Y entry badges. And this is the very simplistic interior, also know from the Model 3 with the steering wheel, which just has these two buttons and then nice matte wood here as well. This is the black interior, it's all animal free, both steering wheel and also the seats, a high grade leatherette, it feels soft, you can easily wipe it clean and no animals were harmed in producing this. This is the way to go, how you produce sustainable electric vehicles. You just offer this one good option or maybe another option or so on and there's no discussion if there is any animal part or something, this is how it's done. There is one option, you can go for the white interior, then white seats you have done here and then um, this part here is more in aluminum. I would like the white seats with the, um, with the wood veneer. Hmm. Elon, can you do that? Tell me in the comments. <laughs> so, and here with 1 meters 86 or um, how, how tall? 1 meters 86 or 6 with 1. There we go. So, here, seats, front, back, like this, this lumbar, you know, um, lumbar support. And when I move it all the way to the, you know, lowest position, still a lot of headroom here with my size, so no problem at all. The steering wheel can always be controlled here, and then like fast access steering, then when you activate that, you, you swipe it up or here, in and out, so it's an easy control. And if you don't have this function um, activated, left side here controls the volume, and um, you can also uh, just, you know, press once of the buttons and then you get the voice activation and so on. So everything makes sense. This has really reduced this interior, but it's really different than, for example, the new Mercedes we've seen. They also want to reduce everything and put it all in touchscreen, but here the thing is, it has a concept, you know, it makes sense and you are not missing so many buttons. Well, that's one thing. I really like to have manual climate, climate units still. Yeah, and a head-up display would be great because there are no instruments, then a head-up display could really come handy. Difference here to the Model 3 is definitely you have this SUV upright seating position, so it will be more comfortable, especially on longer journeys than the Model 3. This would be also one of the main reasons next to that big hatch we have there in the rear. By the way, 2,151, 2,151 liters, I think. Really? Let me see. 2,158 liters. Yeah, sometimes I cheat a little bit. Sometimes. <laughs> Here, one more look from the cockpit perspective. 15 inch screen, so more details to that. Here in the lower part, two inductive charging pads with a nice microfiber cover, and then you can slide one like this open, and a lot of space underneath. The cup holders are not adaptive. That's, uh, you know, that's kind of a fail, so the bottles kind of wobble around a little bit. Then you have this armrest here with even more space underneath. Ooh, here we go. <laughs> I just changed the language to English. That's why it does a new startup, but it actually goes quite quickly, and look how responsive the map is. It doesn't have to load any further, and the German premium manufacturers spend billions on their infotainment system and can't get it that responsive, you know, like this. Yeah, that's really frustrating for the Germans, definitely. Here, you can actually set everything once, I would say. Um, by the, the brightness, but it's also an automatic mode for that. Steering mode, if you want to have the steering wheel a little bit stiffer or a little bit more comfortable. Acceleration, um, rather set it to chill, actually, because this car is really, really fast, and especially for co-drivers, the chill acceleration mode is better. So you set it up here once, and then that's actually it. While driving, of course, changing the temperature is a little bit complicated when you do it like this. The alternative is always 
to use the, um, the voice input. Set temperature to 23 degrees. There we go. Or like this. I'm warm. There we go. It goes down in temperature. So yeah, that's why you should then rather use the voice input. Still, I love manual climate knobs. That's it. <laughs> camera, a very good resolution. And also then here we have the side camera view, which we can finally use then here. So seat heating and let's see here the energy consumption, for example, then and so on. Um, this, of course, no, you know, no real figure here. So on this car hasn't run at all, basically. So I think the software is still really top notch. Nice detail, by the way, here, the frameless back mirror, actually quite elegant. Now getting towards the rear, first look. Our cameraman Thomas B will show you the back part here. And yeah, soft touch also in the rear, that's nice. And once again, microfiber. So good from the build quality once again. And this is how you build electric vehicles. No, uh, you know, no barrier there, no middle tunnel. Everything is free to use. This looks really spacious. And also the same animal free high grade material here in the rear. So yeah, really looking forward now. How does it feel different to the Model 3? We all know that the Model 3 is not the most spacious in the rear end. Yeah, this is actually really good. So you have a lot of leg room, although it's not the longest vehicle. And also headroom wise, no problem at all. And here, look at that. View through the panoramic roof. There is no shade available. It has some, you know, some, you know, sun ray filtering, yes. But still, it does get hot when you are in a very hot state or something it just gets hot here on the inside and you have to run the ac all the time so um you know some of our viewers from really hot u.s states they also complain about that in the model 3 for example but the seating position here definitely more comfortable in the model 3 and considering it's really way cheaper and smaller than the model x you still have kind of the same comfort in the rear i think you can already fold the seats and from here that's also possible but yeah, definitely good comfort here and a lot of space. You can move around freely in the middle part. We have this huge armrest and also adaptive cup holders here. And once again, two USB C chargers. And it's so easy to move around here. And you can also, for example, store things here, you know, maybe transport a plant or something here in an upright way. So very well usable interior. And this Minimalism here in the interior is really calming. Some don't like and say like, ah, you know, that's not premium. But meanwhile, as the build quality has been improved on some, there's like another detail here, for example, these hangers here. They are also, they even have like a small clicking sound and give you some kind of feedback. So they really work on details also here. Sometimes we saw Model 3, which were not aligned quite here and they were like, you know, topsy-turvy like this. So. Yeah, they see you know you see they're really improving things bit by bit so at the moment i'm quite positive about this well this car doesn't have license plates yet so no one could actually drive it yet here in germany but we wouldn't be out of fool if we make everything possible for you you know as far as possible so we can turn some <laughs> rounds here on private ground here there's the good rear view camera and also here at the sides, there's the Audi RS Q3, the other world, the combustion engine world. You can also check out this review on Autogefühl. And let's see. Here also there's, an, of course, the rear view camera. Here we go. And also with the park beeper. And everything is very well to control to ease. Now we have to see that don't damage the RS Q3. And once again, also helpful these other cameras there and here by the way this is not an orange Tesla Model uh, 3 it's a red one it just appears differently on the camera and since this is here the all-wheel drive model five seconds is the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 4.8 as four miles and you know there are these driving modes here chill and standard if you have standard um, there's of course always a heavy acceleration and I mean there's you know just one press on the throttle and this immediate torque and the guys here from the Tesla store, <laughs> they are, um, you know, having their opening internal uh, festivities here. <laughs> so this is very funny, of course, situation right now here. Yeah, very good. Sporty handling from the steering wheel. I can also do some soft off-roading here, by the way, going up this hill. And yeah, I immediately feel that um, this car flexes less than the Model 3, definitely. I drive a little bit slower here. Look at that, this is your Tesla Heavenland. So many 
Model Y now arrived here from Shanghai, Model S right there, Model 3, very interesting definitely. Um, can't say too much about the noise insulation here yet, but suspension wise it will also of course be different because the car sets higher, but to me really the crucial thing will be the difference in the chassis material that will lead that the Model Y will maybe even be the sportier than the Model and the Model 3 just at least felt. Because in the Model 3 quite often I felt that the chassis is just flexing underneath. So Model 3 also concept wise and as for range and efficiency of the electric motors really awesome. But then the driving dynamics were always better with the Germans definitely. So this is something that might change then here with the Model Y and I really have to say yeah, first impression is that the chassis is definitely flexing less and it's actually quite fun to ease it here around. You can also do some parking in and out here. And this also a thing here against the Model X, the Model X, the way bulkier model. And here it's just so much easier to park in and out at that size here. Interesting once again here the you know, normal natural color of the camera and here like this, it's more like a sepia. Uh, color tone or something. But here you can really see it really helps them with the with these additional cameras to park in and out. Well and if you go for the chill acceleration by the way then it's usually the better deal I would say because it just puts yeah, less g-forces on your body so on a daily basis I would rather put it to chill. Maybe when you go for some longer autobahn rides or something then you could you know and really need the power then you could go to this um, this other acceleration mode. Yeah, and they are and the Tesla folks again, they are really having a lot of uh, fun here. I'm on, um, you know, I'm moderating on camera. They're enjoying, uh, you know, their evening beer after a big opening, actually, big opening here of the Tesla store and our, um, you know, with the Model Y here. So, um, yeah, very interesting what's happening here with Tesla in Germany and, of course, soon also the factory with the Model Y that is, um, you know, a lot of criticism also about that, um, about water saving and so on. This is like a big topic on its own. Maybe should do a video on that. But already quite interesting driving impressions. What do you think? Fun fact, by the way, this is a completely new Tesla store in Dortmund, Germany. And this building here used to be a Porsche dealer. And this street here I'm standing on is called Ferdinand Porsche Street. And this, the street that actually leaves this area is called Gottlieb Daimler Street you know, like from Mercedes. So it's kind of an omen that this place, like with two German automotive street names and a former German automotive store is now a Tesla store. I leave that conclusion to you. <laughs> and now please tune in to the VW ID4 GTX video and the Audi Q4 e-tron video.